In this video, we're going to continue discussing constraints. Uh, the big one's the primary key. He is the king of the constraints because he, the way relational databases are related is based on the parent-child relationship between the primary key and the foreign key. All right, so he's really the most well well known. All right, so let's move forward to uh, a similar. He's very similar. He's got the brother of the primary key is the unique constraint. Define columns that will be unique within the table. It prevents data duplication. You can create multiple constraints on a single table. Ah, there's something we can do that we cannot do with PKs. Two differences between the PK and the UC. A table can have only one primary key, and a primary key does not allow nulls. That's true. Nah, unique constraint allows one null. So, <laughs> I'm not, okay, well, does it allow nulls in? Not really. All right, so. Let's go and take a look at unique constraint. So, um, alter table, right, is the syntax. That's a good interview question, actually. Um, how do you uh, create constraints on a table? Uh, or any constraint, one of the five constraints. Uh, don't ask them how many constraints there are. That's silly. Uh, but sure, this is fair game. Uh, alter table on the address, right? This is what we're in question. Here's the database we're talking about. All right, so uh, the name doesn't matter. You know, create your own naming conventions in your organization. As long as you uh, standardize them, it doesn't matter what you what you call them. Unique, non-clustered. Address one. All right, on the column, on primary, on what primary is the default file group? Blank. Oh, wait, it's already there. All right, here's something interesting, right? Refresh. We don't see a. Well, it's a constraint, isn't it? Well, not really. Oh, I mean, yes, it is. Or is it? Yes, but it's uh, more closely related to a primary key than it is one of the other constraints. So it shows up here in the indexes. A little confusing at first. All right, so yeah, it's, I don't like the way that failed, huh? We want to create it cleanly. So we'll delete that, and we'll create it cleanly. Very good. All right, so... Why would we do that? Why would we put a uh, unique constraint on the address one? I don't know, but we just did it to show as an example, and we're moving on. So we're moving on to the check constraint. Check constraints restrict based on a range of values. All right, so let's go take a look at a check constraint. Again, we're using our alter table orders here, and we want to restrict. All right, let's go look at the orders tables. To make sure it's not there. He might have been created earlier. He's not there. All right, so alter table. All right. Check add constraint cell price column in question. Check. We're going to check to see if the cell price is greater than zero because. That makes sense. If not, uh, we're not going to do a lot of business as an organization. All right. So we want the sell price to be greater than zero. So if someone on the application front end, if it's not coded, uh, you know, whatever code you're using, it's not coded through C sharp to uh, restrict uh, putting in, you know, a fraction or a, a point one or a point oh one, uh, this will catch it. All right. So it'll say sorry, blow back an error to the uh, to whomever or whatever and say you uh, you can it's got to be greater than zero All right. and now we just put it on cell price very cool alright so if we were to insert something in there it would not let us insert anything that was not zero or greater alright so we have Default constraints. Uh, they specify a value for a column when the user does not enter one. All right, you'll see these a lot in dates. Right, so let's. So what do we have over here? All right, well let's let's take a quick look at a date one. Right, all right. So on the address table, if we design this, right-click design table. So now we can see our columns and our definitions. We can see it's a modified date. You can see down here that uh, it's been defined. Let's remove that. It, the default value or binding. All right, we can do this. This is how we do it through the GUI. All right, so we get date. 
function. All right, that's the function. And if we move off, we've just done it now. Uh, you, uh, well, I want to know when someone does an insert or modifies a row in here what the date is. So if the front end user, if the user doing the insert, doesn't specify, uh, I'm going to place a date there. Pretty simple. Pretty good stuff. Um, no, it's already there, so we don't need to re add it. All right, let's pull this over because if not, it's ugly. We do not want ugly code. So now we're going to talk about the default constraint. Uh, we're not talking about dates. All right, we're going to put a default constraint. I wonder if this is already on here too. I believe it is. On the e. Eh. Hmm. Oh, it is now. All right. So what we're saying on on this one is select select. Eh, oh from the address table. Look at that. No, <laughs> this is what it will look like. However, uh, I actually I cheated. Uh, I've updated this. All right. Uh, when you do an insert, right. So let's say this these five rows are had already existed. All right. Then there would be null values here. All right. I manually updated this. All right with an update statement. Uh, these constraints, when they're added to uh, existing tables with existing data, only the freshly inserted data will get uh, the constraint applied to it. Alright, that's a pretty important point. Alright, as you can see, this is what it'll look like. So instead of a null value, you get the, uh, the value unknown. Alright, which is kind of comical because what is an all value? Well, really, it's an unknown placeholder. All right. Last but not least, the foreign key. It's very similar to a check constraint, right? Because of the parent, the, the parent-child relationship, when you insert a column into your table, right? Your the parent table, and then you go to do your insert into your child table. Uh, the, the foreign key is going to check, hey, is there a matching row in that parent table? All right, so it enforces a range of values that are allowed in the column. It enforces the parent-child relationship between the primary and foreign keys. So if we look here, we can see, do I have to? All right, so let's open up. Knock this to 100% so we can see it. So we can see customers place orders, right? Customers have orders. So we have the primary key, as you can tell because there's a key there, right? The customer ID to the foreign key in the orders table, right? Uh, this is uh, the key and this is the relationship here. Uh, the infinity sign means uh, uh, there can be many, one to many relationship. All right, so and there we have it on uh, our constraints. All right, very good. Mm -mm.